Hello everyone and welcome back to Rudy's 1-6 World for another retrospective showcase video where we'll be taking a look at an older figure from my collection. And today, following the Daredevil review I did, I decided to like, take a look at the Punisher figure, also released by Hot Toys based on his appearance in Season 2 of Daredevil as portrayed by John Bernthal. Now, I love the MCU. I grew up reading comics, both Marvel and DC, so I developed a huge love for these characters, and the Punisher was one of those characters that just always stood out to me. So when they announced that he would be showing up in Daredevil, I was really looking forward to it. And fortunately, the character didn't disappoint. I'll be honest, I even enjoyed the Thomas uh, Jane version of the Punisher. Didn't think it was the definitive version, but it was an enjoyable action film. And I, don't hate me for saying this, but I even had a blast with the Dolph Lundgren movie that came out in the 80s. Although it was a little strange at points, but John Bernthal, like Charlie Cox, just totally made the role their own. And really, I think, became the best actor to play the character. Season 2 is a personal favorite of the Daredevil series, uh, specifically because of Frank Castle's involvement. I did also really like the Punisher show itself, and there were a lot of great moments there, including the introduction of the Jigsaw character, although I did feel like Frank Castle did get beat up a lot during both seasons. Not saying he didn't dish out as good as he got, but I think sometimes it seemed almost like they underpowered him slightly, which was one small gripe I had. Now, was I expecting him to be John Wick or anything like that? Not really, but just a little bit more than what we got. Now, if rumors are to be believed, John Bernthal should be making his return to the MCU in the new Daredevil show, so it'll be great to see him again and also potentially get another Punisher figure from Hot Toys. So with that out of the way, let's look at the figure and the full package we got from Hot Toys here. And just like with my other retrospective showcases, unfortunately I do not have the boxes. At the time uh, I had this figure, I got him, I was living in an apartment and there just wasn't space to save them. But let's look at the set, and in addition to the figure, we're getting a number of weapons which makes sense with the character like the Punisher, although I do feel like they could always in have included more. In addition, you get a ton of extra hands, a base, and a nice little accessory, which is Daredevil's mask. So it's a nice package, and I think it's very reflective of what we saw with the Punisher on this season of the show. So let's look more closely at the accessories, and we'll start off with the hands. And the first thing that stands out here is the sheer number you're getting, and you're getting a ton for specific poses, and hold his weapons, and you even get closed hands that would allow you to hold Daredevil's batons. So they did plan for a lot of flexibility with this figure. And I will note, the hands are really nicely done with great detail work and paint apps. Stand is pretty much identical to what we got with the Daredevil figure down to the metal nameplate at the front, although I would have liked if the base did say Punisher instead of Daredevil, just seems strange to not include the name. Small issue though, and I really haven't had to use the stand at all though. And then top, the top again looks like a street with some puddles. Now let's turn to the weapons, which should always be a highlight with a character like this. And we'll start with the sniper rifle, which is a Barrett MRAD that we see him use in the finale of the show's second season as he's helping Daredevil and Elektra take on the hand. So it's a really faithful recreation of what we saw on screen, including the long scope. And just the detail work here is amazing with the barrel with slots and the rails all around to mount a whole slew of weapon accessories. Although again, we're just getting the scope. Other great thing here besides the removable magazine is that the bolt actually works and you can pull it back and the rifle also does have a folding stock. Next up we get his revolver, which is a Smith & Wesson model with both top and bottom rails. And it looks really nice with the texture grips and just looks like a much more modern weapon. And even though it's all black, there are some nice color variations with great trigger and hammer, and there is some weathering and dry, dry brushing to make it look more realistic. And in this case, as an added bonus, the cylinder does pop out with some really nice subtle paint apps where you can see the bullets. He also comes with a handheld minigun, which he never really uses, but is seen holding in the last two episodes of the show. And I will say it does feel like a weapon that the Punisher would use and would have, so it's nice to get it. We have seen miniguns from Hot Toys before, namely with the DX-10 Terminator, and I do have that that weapon and this one is different so nice that Hot Toys actually gave us an alternate version and this one does come with the rotating barrel as well as the ammo belt so I really do like this piece and finally it comes with a knife and sheath the knife has some really great detail work with the brown handle and even though it looks like a carbon fiber style blade there is a nice silver etched edge to it so I like the piece sheath is also nicely done including a bunch of bronze rivet like pieces pieces although as you can see with mine the magnets for the 
the clasp around the blade handle has become detached. So I'll have to try to glue those back together. And as a final accessory, we do get the first iteration of Daredevil's cowl with the black forehead and eye plates. And it's really well sculpted, included some minor including some minor cracking down the forehead. And it also does have the same level of details throughout. So it's a nice piece that Frank can hold, especially given the more antagonistic relationship Frank and Matt had early in the season. One note about this piece, you can't put it on the Daredevil figure. It, it just doesn't work with the way the sculpt is designed for that um, figure. And that just does feel like a shame because it would have been nice to have been able to swap this out to get a season one daredevil now let's look at the sculpt itself because i, I do love the figure and, and i think it's a really solid sculpt but i always did feel like the eyes were a little off it's a small nitpick of course because it really looks like john bernthal and even the sculpt on the ears is spot on as far as the rest it looks great with the hints of facial hair the very specific haircut from the end of the season as well as the battle damaged elements paint app wise and and detail wise this is an amazing peach piece which should be no surprise as for the figure itself, I will say the highlight here, and you'll see it later on, is the vest. I, I mean, that vest with the spray-painted Punisher skull is the iconic element of the character. It's what always sets him apart and makes him instantly recognizable. And here it looks great, although it's a little bit more subtle with some runoff paint, since Frank just basically uh, sprays portions of the vest um, with a with a can of paint as for the rest you do get his long leather trench coat And I will say mine has held up remarkably well with no sign of degradation or flaking So hopefully that holds true in the future on top of that one thing I've always loved from hot toys tailoring is that the seam lines are also in scale So while the jacket is fairly straightforward There's a lot of care and detail here to make it look in scale Pants are black cargo pants that work well and have some nice detail work around the pockets, but nothing earth shattering. And then he does have his black boots, and, and they look like Oakley style ones. Somehow I feel like these uh, are, look a little bit better than the ones that came with Daredevil, even though they are a little bit cleaner. It, it just, again, looks better. Maybe just matching the, the clothing access, uh, set overall. Now you can remove the jacket, and as you can see, he comes with a black t-shirt, but here you can really see all the detail work on the vest. And I love the way the skull looks. And kudos to whoever designed the tactical vest because, I mean, the paneling just creates these really menacing natural skull eyes. But beyond that, I meant the detail work here with the, the panels, the buckles, e even the little slots for the shotgun shells. Uh, there's a lot of care that went into that piece. And I'll be honest, it's kind of nice to see him without the trench coat. So, no figure is without issues, and I will say partly due to the age of the figure, the joints are becoming a little loose, so I will probably have to use the stand because he does tend to topple at the ankles, and it does also feel like the knee joints are starting to become a little loose as well. Now, one thing this figure does have, the clothes, including the trench coat, are not restrictive at all. So you would think this would be a really poseable figure, and he is for the most part, but a huge gripe I have here are the elbows. Again, if you've seen my videos, when I have figures with guns, I really do like to get realistic aiming poses or reloading poses. It's one of the beautiful things you get with military figures. Frank has single bend elbows and his shoulders don't have some of the pivots we see with those military figures as well. So when it comes to achieving those natural poses, aiming rifles or, or doing anything like that, it's hard and at some points almost impossible. And what sucks is this is the Punisher. I think giving him that extra poseability would have been essential. It's not to say the figure's horrible because he isn't, but that's the one thing that has always held this release back for me. It's just lost potential there. And look, when you see him without the jacket, I think it's clear Hot Toys wanted to provide something that just visually looked better. Forearms are well sculpted, and while this isn't seamless, I think Hot Toys is trying to make the figure look better. Uh, and they sacrificed the posability as a result. Having said that, I think if they had gone with a long sleeve shirt, they could have completely alleviated, alleviated that issue. Other nitpick I have here, I think he could have used more weapons. I love the rifle, the revolver, and the minigun. I think each is a pretty unique weapon, but I do think that there could have been more. In this season of Daredevil, he actually does use a lot of weapons, including shotguns and machine guns. This feels like it should have been a more loaded release in that sense. Is it a deal breaker? No. One of the nice things of going back in these retrospective reviews is looking at what I can do to get the figure to look better. This may be a case where I might dare to do a body swap, or at the very least pick up some additional weapons to pose him with. But those grapes aside, he still has some presence to him. As I wait for my Magic cases, I have some of my collection in storage and some cramped into Ikea billies. And even in a very cluttered display, he still stands out. 
There's just something intimidating about that iconic skull on vest that just sets him apart. And he looks great standing next to the other Netflix characters. Now, I have seen a ton of third-party figures taken from um, his appearance in his own show, and I have been tempted to pick some up, but I haven't yet. I don't know that I've seen another version that has totally blown me away, but I'm always on the lookout. I do like this version because it feels very comic accurate with the leather trench, but I did like some of his street looks from the Punisher series as well, with him in jeans and a jacket with the bloody Punisher vest on. And speaking of third party, I've been waiting for someone to do a Billy Russo aka Jigsaw. I think especially in season 2 with his mask on, he would have made for a great counterpart to Frank. Not sure anyone else from the show would really stand out as someone needing a figure, but Jigsaw is one of those iconic characters from the Punisher comics. Only question left is where does what does the future hold for the Punisher? Like I said earlier, word is John Bernthal is going to be making a return to the MCU. So I think that's great. And look, the MCU right now is setting up for a great opportunity if they wanted to with this character. There was a comic run leading up to Secret Wars, which we know is coming as a movie in a few years. And anyway, in that run, the Punisher does have to deal with political intrigue in a great series that has a cameo from our new Captain America, Sam Wilson, with them having a fight in DC. I remember reading that series and seeing the splash pages in the book and just thinking, man, it would be awesome to have this on screen. And here we are with the pieces all on the board. And of course, the final standalone story leading to Secret Wars has Frank almost near death after an action-packed hostage rescue. Could we see something like that? Part of me doubts it, but I would love it if we did. So that was a quick look back at the Punisher from Hot Toys, and look, even with some of the gripes I have, he's still a personal favorite from my Marvel collection. Let me know your thoughts, and as always, thanks for watching, and if you are enjoying the content, please go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll touch base on the next video.